Hello, Georgia. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, thanks for jumping into the podcast. But before we start, we do something we like to do called the over the top intro. Let's get into it. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> My next guest is a presenter, an actress, a singer, songwriter, poet, and former child star. Well, she's all grown up now and starting in the new film, Strictly Confidential, in theaters and on the man, starting April 5th. Miss Georgia Lott, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. <laughs> I got to ask, you, one of your jobs is a presenter. How does it feel being on this side of the microphone? Yeah, I mean, I've I've loved presenting. Um, I did I did a, a fair bit of it when I was younger, but my passion has always been in, uh, you know, telling stories and and the idea of being somebody else. So as much as as much as I absolutely love that, and it's still a passion of mine, my my heart has always been in yeah in telling stories and 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 in acting, and and it's lovely to be able to do it in this film. All right, all right. Well, let's jump into this film. You play the character Mia, who is, well, I got to talk about this without spoiling the movie, but um, so you played Mia. What about Mia that drew you to this character? I think um, I really, I just really felt for her, actually. I, and I felt like she was, you know, um, just trying to be a good friend, trying to be a good person, navigating uh, quite a difficult time and a tough situation. And uh, I love a script that has a lot of twists in it. You know, they're the kind of films that I enjoy. A um, little bit of mystery, a little bit of thriller. And so uh, reading the script and, and seeing her journey and, and each um, page turn, having another curveball, it was so up my alley. Okay. And with a film like this, with so many twists and turns in this film, you kind of display every emotion a human could. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was it to show so much range in one character? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, it was um, it was it was a real uh, it was a real gift. You know, I'm I'm so happy to have been able to jump on board this project. Um, she definitely goes through a through a journey, <laughs> uh, for sure. There's a lot um a lot going on, and it's um it's always exciting to be able to you know play play such a such a range and you have to draw on um, personal experiences a lot which uh why well, I, I think <laughs> which uh, can be uh part of um well it's part of the process it can be a little bit um uh emotional at times but i think that's how you really you know draw um draw from things to make the character to feel uh, as real as possible Okay, okay. Um, one thing about this, uh, and I kind of mentioned this in the intro a little bit, like you're a former child star. So what would you say your pivot point was where as a child star, you go into it, hit your marks, don't flub your lines, and that's it. And now you have pivoted to straight up range, acting, storytelling, where you're emoting a little bit more so what would you say was your pivot point where you're just like oh this is the thing now it's really interesting I think um it has felt like it's felt less instantaneous and more of a a sort of real cl climb as it were or a real journey I think there wasn't necessarily a moment where I was like oh okay this is happening because you know when you've been doing I've been doing it 15 years now right this job and so I think it just feels like it does feel like a, a journey and um I loved doing um children's television you know I owe I owe like my career to that I went to an open casting when I was a kid which is how I fell into it um and uh and but it's been really nice to to kind of grow up with that and as I've kind of got older um the the roles that I'm doing are sort of um mirroring that which is really lovely um and I uh you know it's exciting um and I've loved yeah I love I love kids tv but it's really cool to be working on on these kinds of projects um and uh things that do have perhaps more uh, uh range as it as it were okay okay and um well a lot of scenes in this movie you're across from Elizabeth Hurley how did you not freak out 
I don't know. <laughs> Inside. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, she is um, she is an absolute uh, legend and it was a, a real privilege to, to share the screen with her. Um, and not only is she um, extremely talented, but she is such a nice such a nice person so it was a real uh it was a real joy to to work with her okay and when you look at a movie like this and you have to oh man you have some very intense scenes with your uh co-stars this i'm oh you see how i'm wording this so i don't spoil nothing <laughs> uh, but these intense scenes is there like a pre-game talk beforehand or like hey this is just a movie. This is not personal. What, <laughs> is it like, the, do you have to do that? I think, uh, I, well, this, we were so lucky on this film as well because the cast were amazing. Like everyone, you never know when you go to a new set how people are going to, like, hope you're going to gel with everyone or, um, but not only did, yeah, not only did we all get on, we all really, we all really gelled and we, we were really good friends. So, it makes those kinds of things easier because you can just be like, you can just chat, you know, um, have a conversation. But ultimately, it's a, you know, it's your job at the end of the day, and you're you're acting a part, and you're doing a scene, and and that's kind of the same as any other scene, right? So, um, yeah, it's just um, just part of the part of the process. Okay. Um, speaking of the atmosphere around the set, let's talk about that beautiful island you guys shot on. Did you get a chance to explore it or were you just, I'm here for work, uh, I got to go back? What did you do? Did you? Uh, I mean, it was a really intense shoot. Like we shot this film in, in 18 days. So it was pretty go, go, go. Um, but I think that kind of worked, to be honest, with the nature of the film as well, because obviously um, my character is really constantly searching for answers and, and always on the go. So it kind of um, married well together that it worked that way. But um at the same time, we, you know, we had, we managed to to have some uh, dinners together, and uh, when we when the schedules aligned, and 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 explore the island um, for a couple of days. But uh, I mean, it was absolutely beautiful place. Yeah, um, Nevis, um, St Kitts and Nevis. It was absolutely uh, phenomenal. I'd never been to the Caribbean before, and and what a way to experience it. It was breathtaking. Oh my God, uh, you got paid to be there. So yeah, that was awesome. It's not a bad time, is it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, one thing I want to touch on, we only got a few more minutes left. Um, I, I got very short time with you, but I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up. You are a strong advocate of people with OCD. Mm. And you uh, have dedicated you yourself. I hope I'm not talking out of school here. You yourself have been diagnosed from it. And you have been oh, helping yeah. a lot of people getting the word out and helping people. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Some of your advocacies or... Um, I, I I would be remiss if I didn't bring that up. You do a lot of great work in that. Thank you. So no, I I pre you know I appreciate you bringing it up. It's it's a real passion of mine. Um, I developed OCD five years ago. It's a completely misunderstood condition. Unfortunately, the stereotypes um are completely they're they're totally incorrect. Um, and um that's you know causing a lot of people pain. I would never have known what I uh had developed was OCD. I would I just I would never have ever considered it to be that. Um, and so I'm really passionate because learning what it was, you know, um, effectively saved my life. So I'm really passionate about getting out what the, the truth of OCD and so that awareness is raised so that people that are suffering can learn what they're suffering from and, and hopefully, you know, get the help that's going to help them be able to to, to live uh, live well. OK, well, you do a lot of great work in that area. And one question, almost obligatory. I, I, I loved you so much in this movie. What's next on the horizon for Georgia Locke? Oh, things that I'm not allowed to talk about, really. Um, <laughs> uh, classic. Um, maybe, maybe an untitled animation project for Netflix. Maybe not. Like, <laughs> that's all I can really say. All right. Well, here's what I'll do. In the midst of this podcast, I'll make sure um, I put out your socials. That Thanks. way, when the thing you can or cannot talk about, maybe or maybe not show up, you will know. That, that That's fair, mm -hmm. right? I think that's great. <laughs> All right, well, Georgia, thank you so much for your time. This has been awesome. You're welcome back anytime you want. Um, much success in everything you do. And this was a great movie. 
And I can't wait to see you again in some projects we may or may not be able to talk about right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lovely to speak to you. All right, you're welcome back anytime, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day. You too.